Let's welcome back in our guys, Brady Quinn, Pete Prisco, and Danny Cannell. I'm Amanda Guerra taking over for Chris Hassel. We just shoot him on out of here. Uh, Pete, I want to start with you and just the reports that he may be meeting with these two teams in the next 48 hours or so. Well, I think it's good business on both sides. I mean, he wants to get a feel for what each of those teams uh, is like, what the coaching staff is like, what the front office has plans for in terms of building that roster. And on the other side, they want to get an idea who he is as a person. I mean, there's still civil suits out there. So you, you want to hear his side of things uh, before you go command uh, a big market trade to land him as your quarterback. So I think it's due diligence on both sides. It's the right thing to do. Remember, he has a no trade clause in his contract. If he doesn't want to go to one of those teams, he can say flat out say, I'm not going, and they can't trade him to him. So uh, I think it's a good and wise move on both sides to find out what they're all about. For sure, and that's what this is about. But I'll tell you one thing that's different in these two franchises, and this has to do with where Matt Rule come, came from, and he's a recruiter. I mean, he was in the college game for a time at Temple, at Baylor. He's built up place, so he's used to selling players on a program. And I think he's going to give Deshaun Watson the sell. I also think David Tepper, the owner of the Panthers, is looking around since he's bought the franchise being like, man, I haven't had the greatest return on my investment. What if I can go get a breakout quarterback who just had – the last time we saw him play was his best season. He's coming into his own. He'll be 27 when the uh, year starts. There is some baggage here. But when you're talking about an owner like this who comes from financial world, knows well – about the risk reward proposition. And yes, there's some risk with Deshaun Watson's character, but I think once he spent some time with him, looks at where and talks to his coaches in college, talks to some of the people that were around him, says, man, we might not be able to have him. He's gonna have a suspension, but the long-term returns on an investment in Deshaun Watson will make this move up very favorable to the reward side. So ultimately, I, I have a hunch that's kind of where he ends up. If you pin me down and said, where do you think Deshaun Watson's playing uh, next? I'll say the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, I'm with you there, DK. I think they can make a pretty attractive pitch, especially considering where his college days were and knowing how desperate David Tepper is to turn this thing around in Carolina. Matt Rule as well. Here's what I'd want to know if I'm the Saints or the Carolina Panthers. Before all of the off-the-field allegations occurred, or we at least knew of them, Deshaun Watson came out and said he didn't want to play for the Houston Texans. Uh, he didn't really want to entertain that. And I don't know what the falling out was with Cal McNair or with the Texans organization, but he signed a monster contract extension and then felt that way after having one of his better st statistical years. I know the team struggled, but I I'd want to know if, look, if we're going to make this commitment to you, especially considering you know, some of uh, the, the PR hit we may take to bringing you in here, knowing what's out there, we need to understand what exactly occurred with the Houston Texans organization before all of this became public and why you no longer wanted to play there, regardless of the circumstances uh, that, that's out there with the civil suits. So that would be one of the biggest questions I want to answer. That's kind of all gotten you know, swept under the rug right now. We've kind of all forgotten about it because of the legal issues that he's facing at the moment. All right, so we know the Texans have a, a pretty steep price for Deshaun Watson right now. Uh, anywhere from about three first-round picks, maybe some other picks as well, big-name player or two. If you are the Saints, what could you offer the Texans for Deshaun Watson? Well, look, I mean, everyone can throw out future picks, right? So I, I think what, what happened with Seattle and Denver is the market's kind of been set, I think, for what we'll see. You know, Russell Wilson's under contract for a couple of years. Now, he's had a better career than Deshaun Watson has, but Deshaun Watson's young. He's still under contract for a pretty reasonable price, if you're asking me. So I think two first-round picks, so 2022, 2023, and two second-round picks to go along with that, and a star player. So Michael Thomas, for example, with the New Orleans Saints, and you might say that's counterintuitive because Deshaun Watson's going to want him on the roster, but you'll be able to find someone to replace him. And I don't know how happy he is. I don't know where his health is at at this point. I don't know what the deal is with, with Michael Thomas. But the truth is, if you don't feel like he's worth the price of what that contract costs at the moment, then you ship him off as a part of that trade package. If it's Carolina, it's probably Christian McCaffrey. He hasn't been able to stay healthy the past couple of years. He's got a pretty high price tag. Even though when he's healthy, you know, both these players are really impactful. The reality is too high of a price tag to keep there moving forward. You ship him off as well. I think that would be sort of the, the trade package I'd be looking at if I was the Houston Texans and I'm trying to make a deal right now for Deshaun Watts. I think that's about what you're going to get. Yeah, if I'm the, if I'm the Saints, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd race uh, if they would take Michael Thomas off my hands. That contract is bloated. He doesn't want to be there. He never has liked being there. 
Uh, he hasn't been a great teammate. So if you want to take him, go ahead, have at it. Uh, but I think two, two ones and two twos, or maybe even three ones. I mean, I, I really you keep hearing that something that they're looking to get. Uh, does it sound like a lot? Of course it does. It sounds like way too much. But I, if I'm, he's a franchise quarterback in his prime. There's no value you can place on that. He's a star quarterback who the Texans are trading for whatever reason. I wouldn't trade him. I'd say you're playing for me or you're not playing, period. But that's not what they're going to do. They're going to trade him. So I think three ones. And if you're Carolina, they're a desperate team. Think about it. Tepper's been looking for a quarterback for forever. They passed on Justin Herbert for whatever reason, even though I heard people wanted to take him. They didn't. Uh, they could have traded up and got him. And here's the other thing. Matt Rule needs to win now. This guy's out probably after this year if he doesn't win. So he's going to want to make the deal. So I think Carolina, like Danny said, will be the team that lands them. Now, what do they give up? They don't have a second or a third. So what do they give up? They give up three ones or two ones and a lot of players. What players? I'm not giving up Brian Burns in that trade. I'm not giving up Jeremy Chin in that trade. I'm not giving up Derek Brown in that trade. Anybody else you want? Go ahead, have them. Uh, in the words of Les Snead, Bleep them picks, man. Picks are overvalued. You know what you're getting into Sean Watson. You know you're getting a quarterback coming into his prime who's been improving every single season. So take two ones, take whatever, take three ones, whatever it takes. And you do have to be a little bit coy about it. You can't just let them absolutely fleece you. But bottom line is you move mountains to make this deal happen. And I totally agree with both of you guys on Michael Thomas. And I would agree, too, on Christian McCaffrey. Uh, it's, it's the same sentiment as Pete said about Michael Thomas, like begging them to take him. Sure, you want Christian McCaffrey a position, and this is not a knock against Christian McCaffrey, but a position that we can pretty much easily replace in a draft in the third round. Yeah, go ahead and take to Christian McCaffrey. Go ahead and take that off the books. And whatever picks you want as well, because you know what you're getting in Deshaun Watson. I know there's legal issues and you may not have them for a period of time, but once those are resolved and you get the suspension out of the way, you've got your answer at quarterback for the next decade. And that is something that you can't replace in a draft pick. And the draft picks, as much as we talk about them, the ones, if they're one, well, you can't give up three ones. How many of those ones that we see team picks actually end up panning out where you're getting a pro bowler or somebody that's going to even reach their second contract there there's a 50 50 proposition in most of them so go ahead and take the short thing give away the picks and do whatever it takes to get your franchise quarterback be careful danny when you talk about those running backs i mean uh, you know you know my <laughs> philosophy on them you draft I know, them and i right said on me, twitter you run them you. into the you run them into the ground and you replace them and everybody said how dare you you don't care about them as human beings how dare you say that well that's a part of football that's the reality and those same people who are giving me crap about saying that you know what they'll sit there on sunday and curse that player when he fumbles too do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.